right, Mount Olive, it's so good to be here with you this morning. We're excited to have you here. We are uh, going to be a good service this morning. We got a, a guest speaker, and I'll tell you a little bit more about him in just a minute this morning. Got a, quite a few announcements, so I uh, want to make sure everybody listens to these, please. We got quite a few things going on coming up through the summer months here. First of all, I want you to be praying for Steve Roberts. He uh, um, just got an announcement. He's leaving just a, actually just a few minutes. I think after their service this morning, he's leaving out to go back to Madagascar, and we gave a love offering to him a few weeks ago, and uh, just wanted you to be a point of prayer for that. Also, uh, this Wednesday night, we're going to be having a messy games night with the youth. Uh, that starts at 6 o'clock. The bulletin says it'll be after service, but it's actually going to be before service starting at 6, so the youth get here at 6. Um, summer camp's coming up right the next week. We leave the next Tuesday, the youth do, to go to summer camp. And there's a table set up right out here. We're asking for the church to help us with that, and donate water, Gatorade, or snacks. And there's a few out there on the table already. If y'all could help us with that, we've got to have those collected by next Sunday. Um, so that would really help us out a lot. Also, Oasis Medical Center love offering. Y'all have seen those bottles sitting around uh, all over our church, and some of you have those at your house. There's a few empty ones still over here. We're asking you to take those home, fill them out with money, um, fill them up with money, change, whatever you have, as much as you can get in there, and bring it back and put them in this bag, and we'll collect those and get those to the Oasis Medical Center, and that's a good way. We've done that a few years now, and it's a good way to, to help them out. So y'all do that for us. Mission Week is right around the corner as well. Um, it's June the 19th to the 23rd. Um, if we're going to be doing, just like we've done the last couple of years, Neighbors Helping Neighbors. We're going in with a couple other churches in our area, and we're just going to make a mission effort here at our hometown, in our area right here. And so there's some projects within our church we'll be doing. There's some projects within our community. And uh, last, uh, I know we have a roof that we'll be trying to put on. we got some painting we got to do and those kind of things. Uh, yard work. We need people to help out on cooking teams. There's a lot going on with that. We need our church to be a part of that. So uh, there's a sign-up sheet right out here in the Sunday school window. We ask you to sign up. Let us know. Um, talk to Robbie if you've got any questions. He's got all the details on that. Um, but we need you to sign up. If you can help put a roof on, let us know you can help put a roof on. If you can paint inside, right now I can paint or whatever. Let us know kind of some things that you can do so we can kind of get people lined up where they need to be. That's only in a couple of weeks, so we need you to sign up as fast as you can. We want our whole church to be a part of this, and, and it's been really good the last couple of years. I know last year we had somewhere in the neighborhood of 30 to 40 people involved in that, maybe a little bit more, and uh, um, it's really good. The one thing about doing this, maybe you only get two days off that, that week. You can work those two days, and uh, you can make a big impact. Maybe you only get one day off. We want you that day, so well, um, try, to, try to sign up for that. Let us know. Uh, also, Kids Camp and VBS are happening the same week this year. Um, it's going to be July the 9th through the 12th. It's going to be VBS, and there's a sign-up sheet right out here in the Sunday School window as well for people who can help out with VBS. Y'all sign up for that. And then Kids Camp will start the next day. We'll start that Thursday through the, through the Saturday, 13th through the 15th. So July the 9th through the 12th is VBS. July the 13th through the 15th is going to be Kids Camp. And uh, put those dates down and start making plans to be a part of that and get area kids and, 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 and those kind of things involved in that. Also, this weekend coming up, Saturday night at 5 o'clock, Molly Coon will be marrying Cameron Bonds. And, and y'all be here for that. The church is invited uh, uh, for sure to that. That will start at 5 o'clock. It will be here at our church. And, uh, and there will be a reception that will be in the fellowship hall after that's over. So make sure you're aware of that. Also, tonight, uh, normally we do fifth Sunday night singing. Well, in the bulletin it says fourth Sunday night that's singing. Well, it's actually going to be a first Sunday night singing. So this is actually the first. So um, we're going to do uh, discipleship at 530, first Sunday night singing at 630, and no fellowship afterwards. Since we um, fellowship last Sunday night and had brotherhood this morning, we're actually going to not have a fellowship afterwards, but uh, we're going to have singing at 630, discipleship training at 530, and, uh, and so that's going to be our evening service tonight. So y'all be here for that. And uh, I wanted to give you just a little bit of information on our speaker this morning. This is the condensed version. I got three pages of notes here from Brother Forrest, okay? And uh, got a lot about you here. But I'm, this, is, this, is, this is the condensed version. He's uh, been a pastor. First of all, his name is Tommy Winders. He's been a pastor for 32 years, retired from Carrollton Baptist Church. And uh, his wife is Diane. He has two children and uh, seven grandkids. So that's some pretty amazing. He graduated from Delta State. And uh, um, he went to seminary at New Orleans Theological ba New Orleans ba Baptist Theological Seminary. And uh, like I said, I got three more pages. If you want to know some more dirt on him, it's probably somewhere in these three pages of notes here. But uh, we look forward to having you in a few minutes, and uh, we're, we're excited to have you speak to us. And I got one card this morning 
um, that I wanted to read, then I'll get off the stage. Actually, this is actually there's two cards in this one card, but uh, they sent us two. This is from um, our Brother Lars Franks. We gave him a love offering a few weeks ago. His house burned. He's been trying to rebuild that. And uh, he says, thank you so much for, um, for all that you did. It helped me to get another home. God bless all that you've done. Thank you, uh, Lawrence Franks. And uh, there's two cards in here. Um, so uh, he was very thankful for that. And thank you, church, for stepping up and helping out with that. Um, let's bow for a word of prayer, and then we'll have a time of fellowship. Then we'll get our service started. Father God, thank you so much for this day. God, thank you that you've given us the opportunity to be here. Thank you for keeping us safe as we traveled to church this morning and, and through the rain, through the storms. God, but we know that this, this morning, God, that you have something for us. God, we don't come here by accident. We don't come here. Um, God, we're here on purpose. And this morning, we're here to, for, to hear a word from you, God. We're here praying for our, our, our pastor that's coming to lead us. God, we pray that you would just use him in a special way to, to speak to our hearts. God, that you would even speak through him. And, uh, God, that your will would be done, nothing more, nothing less than the very center of your will through our service today, God. We also pray for our song service, that we would worship you. And we would sing those songs, God, to you, um, about you, that it would not be about us and about our voice, God, but it would be about bringing praise, glory, and honor to you. God, we pray for all those in our church that are hurting and sick and, and, and God, having issues and down, down and out right now. God, we just pray that you, would, that you would be with them. God, help us as a church to come alongside them, encourage them, and stand with them. God, I also pray that you help us as a church to be a beacon of light in this community as well, God. Let them know this is a place where Jesus is, is, is praised, um, Jesus is worshiped. God, help us to be a, that this is a place that people know that the word of God is preached. And, and God, may we stand on that always. God, may you continue to lead and guide our church. May we continue to follow after you. God, thank you again for this day, and we just look forward to what you have for us. In your son's name, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Y'all stand up and let's shake hands and hug next this morning, please. This morning we're going to start our service by singing Holy, Holy, Holy. It's page two in our hymnals. It will be on the overheads. Let's, let's praise God. Let's praise a holy God in heaven this morning as we, uh, as we sing together.
God we serve, a God that sent us a Savior. This morning we're going to sing page 438, Heaven Came Down. <laughs> in the garden. Let's stand as we sing.
I guess Brother Forrest was afraid to tell y'all how long I preached. That's the reason y'all giving me 50 minutes. <laughs> I normally don't cut it that short, but I'm going to do my best to do that this morning. Thank y'all for the privilege of being here. I go back a long way with Forrest Sheffield. When I was in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, Forrest came to two... So I knew everybody there and looked at Dr. Sheffield and I said, "Your grandma, Coon you were Grandma Kuntz's pastor in Harrow, Oklahoma. He goes, I sure was. How do you know her? I said, she was my wife's grandmother. One month short of being 99, and when I stood up to do her funeral, there was nothing I could say because she had already preached it <laughs> for 99 years. I want to do something special for you this morning. You see me, I want you to see and hear the better part. Diane is from Oklahoma, graduate of Oklahoma Baptist University. She sang in the Bison Glee Club for four years as a featured soloist. She traveled all over the country. For 15 years, we traveled in evangelism, then for the last 32, uh, I've been a pastor. I'm retired from the active pastorate, but I'm doing what I love to do. I'm preaching. I love to preach. That's where I have my most fun. Committee meetings and stuff, not so much. <laughs> not so much at all. Somebody asked me in Sunday school the other day, they were talking about, said, Brother Tommy, do you remember some of the the, the times of pressure and, and aggravation and stuff. I said, yeah, we call those deacons meetings. <laughs> I want you to hear Diane sing this morning. She's going to come and sing a precious little song entitled, I Love You, Lord. You ever wondered church my whole life? But I remember as a young boy, even as a, a young teenager, me asking my mom and dad sometimes said, uh, Daddy, oh so and so's in church all the time, but I see him out at the ball field. He's falling down drunk. Or old so-and-so's in church all the time, but Daddy, I, I saw him the other day with a woman that wasn't his wife. Wasn't his sister either. They must have been kissing cousins. 
You ever wondered? I mean, we all know people that, that are in church all the time, but they mean as a yard dog. They leave church and they walk out those doors and they leave their Christianity behind. It shouldn't puzzle us because Jesus explains that in Matthew 13. Take your Bible and turn to Matthew chapter 13. I want you to leave them open there. We're going to walk through this chapter, and I'm going to show you why going to church doesn't help some folk. What Jesus is doing here, he's analyzing his congregation. And he said the reason going to church doesn't help some people is not because of the preacher. It's not because of the music. It's not because of the deacons. It's not because of the Sunday school teachers. It's not because of the leadership. It's because we don't hear the Word of God with the right kind of heart. I'm going to share with you this morning four kinds of hearts that listen to the Word of God. And we're going to find them here in Matthew chapter 13. We're bad, I'm bad, about going to a conference or a convention and prejudging the conference or the convention by the speakers that are on program. Diane and I have made it a habit of going to our state convention, our Southern Baptist convention. Uh, It's going to convene in Phoenix next week, and somebody called me two weeks ago and said, Brother Tommy, you going to Phoenix? I go, no. They said, why? The convention's meeting out there. And I said, it's hot. It's a long way out there. And there's no church going to pay my way. I'm going to stay home. But I'd get the program and it'd say, so-and-so going to speak. I'd go, whoo, goody. I loved hearing him. So-and-so's going to speak. No, I heard him one time. He wasn't very good. I don't want to hear him. You ever done that? We'll prejudge a revival the same way. Evangelist so-and-so's coming. Well, somebody told me he was loud and long-winded. I don't like him. Listen to what Jesus said. Chapter 13, verse 1 said, On the same day Jesus went out of the house and sat by the sea. Great multitudes were gathered together to him, so that he got in the boat and sat, and the whole multitude stood on the shore. Then he spoke many things to them in parables, saying, Now, Jesus here is analyzing his congregation. He's trying to tell them, and and we're going to approach this not so much as a parable of the sower nor a parable of the seed, but we're going to approach it as a parable of the soil. Jesus is saying that that which affects the fruitfulness of the Word of God is not so much the personality of the sower, but it's dependent upon the soil into which it falls. Notice, and by the way, when Brother Forrest comes back and you tell him, well, Brother Forrest, that dude didn't do a thing for me. He's drier than dirt. I'm not going to take that blame. Because if you walk out of here today and God has not blessed you, don't you blame this preacher. It's not my fault. It's not Dr. Sheffield's fault. It's not the music director. It's not. It's the way you and I receive the Word of God. I want you to notice. Look at verse 4. The first heart he talks about is the heart that shuts out the Word of God. As he sowed, some seed fell by the wayside, and the birds came and devoured them. Now go down to verse 19. Here's the explanation. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, then the wicked one comes and snatches away which was sown in his heart. That is he who receives seed by the wayside. Now, I know I didn't grow up on a farm. My grandparents had a little 40-acre spread down around Richmond community just north of Nettleton. But I know enough about going down there that when Papa would get ready to plant, and by the way, my Papa only farmed with a mule. 
He never had a tractor. He never had the modern machinery. And my papa was a man of very few words. You know what the mule's name was? Mew. I'm not lying to you. I'm telling you the truth. But I'd watch Pop on him get out there, and I'd watch them plant. Well, the wayside is that path between the rows. And as they would walk along dropping seed in the rows, sometimes the seed would accidentally fall on that wayside. Now, that, that wayside, that path, it had been walked on and trod on. It had been beaten down. And it was hard for seed to penetrate that hard soil. And that's what he's talking about here. He said it accidentally fell on there. It fell on the soil. And notice when he said he doesn't understand it. That does not mean he did not intellectually understand it. That word means he did not welcome it. He did not take it in. His heart is so so hardened to the Word of God like that soil that's been tramped on day after day after day. And notice Jesus said the devil is watching to see his reaction. When you and I leave today, the devil is watching to see how we react to the Word of God. And, and, and Oscar Thompson wrote a book entitled Concentric Concerns, Circles of Concern. He said Satan is not concerned how many people gather in a service if all they do is listen and leave. Satan doesn't care how much so seed is sown as long as he can steal it away. Now you stop and think about that. You hear the Word of God, but it has no impact. You don't welcome it. You, you, you don't try to understand it. And notice, he, he says there are three things that, that will cause a heart to shut out the Word of God. He talks about pride, an attitude of, I have everything that I need. I have need of nothing. The attitude that's in America today, we don't need God. I don't care where you stand politically, but if we'd had any more years after the last eight, I'd have moved. I'd have gone somewhere. Never been to Madagascar, but it'd be a good place to start. I have been to Romania. I have been to Brazil multiple times. I have been to Guatemala. You and I have no clue what it's like to live in God-blessed America. Not until you go outside this country. But the joy is seeing those people so hungry for the Word of God. They don't shut it out. They don't, they're, they're not prideful and says it can't do anything for me. There's another thing that will cause you to shut the Word of God out, and that's fear. Now, I know y'all look at me now and you say, well, that's a big old strapping boy. You know, I hadn't always been this big. I graduated high school, same height I am, but I weighed about 155 pounds. My basketball pitcher, I look like a Q-tip. <laughs> I was a skinny dude. When Diane and I married in 1968, I weighed 180 pounds. I saw that one other time in our marriage, and that was, it was going past. <laughs> No, really. Uh, I did get under 180 one time. I was running marathons, and don't even talk to me about that. I, I pulled weeds out of the yard yesterday, and, and I, I got so stoved up I can barely walk. And by the way, Drew, that neighbors helping neighbors, I'm right down the road. <laughs> Send somebody to pull weeds. But you know, I can, I, when I was pastoring, I could drive up in the yard, TV blaring, lights everywhere, and I cut my car off. All of a sudden, the lights go out, the TV shuts down. I knock on the front door, and I hear them going out the back. Are they afraid of me? Uh-uh. They're afraid of who I represent. See, we're afraid sometimes that if we welcome the Word of God... It'll cause us to change our lifestyle, <laughs> and it will. There's another thing that causes us to shut out the Word of God. That's sin. 
D.L. Moody put in the fly leaf of his Bible, either this book will keep me from sin or sin will keep me from this book. Have you ever noticed how that when your life's not right with God, you don't have any great desire to study the Word of God? You don't want to read the Word of God. You don't want to spend any time with the Word of God. Well, the heart that shuts out the Word of God. Look at verse 5. Some fell on stony places where they didn't have much earth. And they immediately sprang up because they had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, they were scorched. And because they had no root, they withered away. Not only the heart that shuts out the Word of God, but here we have the heart that starves the Word of God. Look down at verse 20. But he who received the seed on stony places, this is he who hears the Word and immediately with joy receives it. Yet he has no root in himself, but endures only for a while. For when tribulation or persecution arises because of the word, immediately he stumbles. He received the seed on stony places. That's that thin skin of earth. That underneath that thin skin of earth is bedrock or limestone or hard rock and the seed will penetrate that soil but it can't go very deep and it can't take root and grow it's the shallow heart the the heart that that starves the word of God notice the Bible says he hears the word and immediately receives it with joy yet he has no root in himself it's only temporary But when affliction or persecution arises because of the word, immediately he falls away. You ever known anybody like that? In our 15 years of evangelism, we would go in and we'd see God do some tremendous work in people's lives. And amazingly, pastors would invite me back. Usually... Well, I did one church four years in a row, and he said, are you coming next year? And I said, no, sir. He said, why, Tommy? Our people love you. And I said, I love being here, and y'all are so good to me. But my soul, you've got to give me time to study and get some more sermons. I've told y'all everything I know. And I just told y'all some of the stuff I suspected. But I'd go back, and I said, Brother Charles, you remember when we were here last year, there was a couple sat right over here, and they got so excited and so fired up. I haven't seen them this week. He said, well, they got their feelings hurt. Somebody looked at them cross-eyed one day. I said, over what? He said, oh, something simple. You know, I rarely in all my years of preaching, and, I, and next month will be 50 years I've been preaching, I have rarely ever encountered a church that split over doctrine. It's always something petty. The color of the carpet. There was one church in Kentucky, true story, that split over the color of the hymnals. Y'all got white hymnals. They wanted red for the blood of Jesus. Then go buy you a red hymnal and bring it with you. My goodness. The heart that starves the Word of God doesn't allow the Word of God to to penetrate and make a difference in their lives. There's another one. Look at verse 7. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang up and choked them. Now look over in verse 22. Now he who receives seed among the thorns is he who hears the word, and the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word, and he becomes unfruitful. You've got the heart that shuts out the word of God. You've got the heart that shuts out the word of God. Now we have the heart that strengthens the word of God. The Greek word for thorns literally means dirty ground, cluttered ground. I remember when Papa would be breaking up new ground, 
if we grandchildren were fortunate enough to be down there. By the way, we didn't have running water. We didn't have indoor plumbing. We had a well in the back that you pulled it up and drank out of the dipper. And you hoped you drank out of the side that great aunt who dipped snuff and it ran out of, she was well balanced because it ran out of both sides of her mouth. I remember old boy went out and see, saw somebody sitting on the porch. He said, can I have a drink of water? They sure, there's a gourd right there. Help yourself. And he took that and he turned it all kind of crazy ways. They said, well, grandma, same way. <laughs> he looked up and saw grandma with snuff dripping. But Papa would let us go out in the field and we'd pick up the glass. We'd pick up the trash. We'd pick up the dead grass. We, because the ground, as he broke up the new ground, it was cluttered. And if you tried to plant something in that cluttered ground, the weeds and all that trash would choke it up. It would strangle it. And I want you to notice what he says. He mentions two things in particular. He mentions the worry of this world, literally means the responsibilities of this life. The deceitfulness of riches, that means the pleasures of this life. Now, all of us have responsibilities. I mean, you, you, you've got jobs to do. You've got homes to, to keep. You've got children to raise. You've got grandchildren to love on and spoil and send them back home after you've loaded them up with sugar so that they'll bounce off the walls for four days before mom and daddy can get them calmed down. I know we got seven of them. We love it. They range there 20, 19, 18, 17, 14, 13, and 12. And the 20-year-old and the 19-year-old in one family living in Baton Rouge. And the other five are in a family in Hendersonville, Tennessee. Our daughter says she's normal. She has two children. She said, my brother's an overachiever. He has five. And y'all pray for Caleb, our only grandson, Brian's oldest child, He's gone to the dark side. He has been accepted at the University of Tennessee, Knoxville. His daddy pitched at LSU. That's not a good place for him to go. I told him, though, he got a great academic scholarship. I said, son, I don't care where you go. As long as you're happy and it's good for you, it's good for Papa. But I'm not going to wear orange. I did wear orange the other day. It wasn't Tennessee orange. I sent him a picture, and I said, I'm practicing. He said, looking good, Papa, looking good. The things we'll do for our grandkids. Here's what happens, though. The responsibilities. You can't do anything about the responsibilities. We all have to take care of our responsibility. But here's where we run into trouble. Not only the responsibility, but the deceitfulness of riches, that simply means the pleasures of this world. That's where we get so caught up. It's not our responsibilities. It's our pleasures. In January of 2003, I called Diane on the cell phone. I said, come down to the church. We were at First Baptist Church, Fulton, Mississippi. So she drove down to the church, and I looked at her, and I said, happy birthday to me. And I'm sitting astride a Harley. She goes, oh, my goodness. I said, I told you I was going to buy one. She said, I didn't believe you. I said, have I ever lied to you? She said, no. I said, then why didn't you believe I was going to buy a Harley? Well, I kept it for 12 years. Had more fun on that thing. Rode everywhere. Got to, got, to, got to learn a lot about the communities I was living in. And I told her when I sold it, I said, I'm going to buy me a boat. She said, where are you going to put it? I said, well, your van's going to have to sit outside the garage. I'll put my, my boat in the garage. <clears throat> By the way, I don't have a boat. 
and her van is still parked in the garage. But we get so caught up with the pleasures of this world. Now, I needed a boat like I need a hole in my head. I almost bought one when we were in evangelism. And Diane said, Tommy, when in the world are we going to use it? Because when we come home on the weekend, Brian's playing ball. How, how are we going to find time to go to the lake? I said, we'll just quit going to church. I didn't buy a boat back when we were in evangelism. And we did not quit going to church. But I've watched in the churches I've pastored. I've watched parents that got so caught up in travel baseball, travel softball, travel soccer, travel this, travel that. The church gets way down. I talked to a lady yesterday that said, I'm so excited. I'm going to get to go to church tomorrow. Because between being at the beach and my nine-year-old playing travel ball, I've missed church all summer. Now, whose fault is that? See, we get so caught up with all of these... Hey, the pleasures of this, the, the deceitfulness of riches, the pleasures of this, it could be anything. It doesn't have to be ball. It could be anything. Anything that takes the place of that right relationship with God through Jesus Christ. Anything that has first place in my life other than God is wrong. It doesn't matter whether it's my grandchildren it doesn't matter whether it's my activities. And that's what he's saying. Most of us are just too busy. We, we, we mean to. I mean, Sunday after Sunday, Dr. Sheffield will preach, and God will speak to us, and we'll be blessed. And we'll sit there, whether we come forward or stay in our pew, we'll sit there and we'll say, God, I'm going to make a difference. I'm going to let you change my life. Then we walk out those doors, and we get just as busy as we were before we came in. The heart that strangles the Word of God. One more. The heart that shuts out the Word of God. The heart that starves the Word of God. The heart that strangles the Word of God. And I hate to admit this, but I don't find this one a whole lot in most Baptist churches. Look down at verse 8. But others fell on good ground and yielded a crop, some, to, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Verse 23, but he who receives seed on the good ground is he who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and produces some a hundredfold, some 60, and some 30. This same parable is over in Luke, and Luke says he holds it fast or, or he keeps it. This heart doesn't shut it out, it doesn't starve it, it doesn't strangle it. This heart surrenders to the Word of God. That phrase, he keeps it, it means to watch diligently, to keep a watchful eye on it. One of the things that I enjoyed about having the Harley was I got to explore the back roads of Vettawamba County and then when I moved to Alabama, Pickens County and, and all of that area. But one of the things I became acutely aware of, you got to watch for other people, but, but I also had to watch for road signs because I could be tooling around in the country going 45, 50 miles an hour, and if a sign said sharp curve ahead, I didn't speed up. I slowed down. I adjusted my speed according to the road signs. The heart that surrenders to the Word of God adjusts their life according to thus saith the Lord. Surrenders to the Word of God. Have you ever been reading God's Word or, or been listening to a, to a sermon and God really prick your heart and speak to you and you say, Lord, that's exactly right. I need to do something about that. If you strangle it, or if you starve it, or if you shut it out, that's not what God's looking for. God's looking for hearts that surrender to the Word of God. I wish I could tell you 
that in every church I've preached in, and it's been over 500, and of every church I've pastored, I only pastored three churches in 32 years. I wish I could tell you that the vast number of people in the churches had hearts that surrendered to the Word of God. But I didn't. Oh, I had people who would play church. I had people who, who would talk the talk. But you see, I don't believe God's nearly as interested in folks who talk the talk as he is in people who walk the walk. Adjust our living according to thus saith the Lord. What kind of heart do you have today? Are you shutting out the Word of God? Are you starving the Word of God? Are you strangling the Word of God? I pray that all of us will have a heart that surrenders to the Word of God. Father, thank you for speaking to us this morning, for challenging us, Lord, from your Word. And I pray, Father, during this time of response, during this time of invitation, that as we listen to you, we'll not just listen, but we'll also respond. We'll let you have your way in our hearts and our lives this day. Thank you for speaking to us and challenging us from your word. Now, Father, may we respond in obedience to you. For it's in the precious, powerful name of Jesus we pray. Amen. We're going to stand and we're going to sing. You know this song, Have Thine Own Way, Lord, Have Thine Own Way. If you need to respond publicly, Drew's going to be here. If you need to respond privately, just a time between you and God. But would you respond this morning as God speaks to you? Thank you so much, Brother Tommy. We thank you. We want, we'd ask, love for you to stand in the back back here and uh, let our people come by and shake your hand. We really appreciate your word this morning. Um, got a couple of things before you leave this morning. We will be having a work day this Thursday night at about 6 o'clock um, in the youth, the new youth area, the old fellowship area. If you can come help out, we're going to try to build some walls and, and do some different things down there. So if you can h- come help out in any way, we'll be having a work day this Thursday. Also, a visitation meeting next Sunday night. If you're on the visitation team, next Sunday night at 5 o'clock in the fellowship hall. Don't forget that. And don't forget about our first Sunday night singing tonight, okay? And uh, we're going to have discipleship training at 530, singing at 630. No fellowship afterwards, so come and let's be a part of a good service tonight. Uh, Thank you so much. We're going to ask Brother Tommy to go ahead and head back, and I'm going to ask Robbie if he would mind praying us out this morning.